Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored that we can. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful name of Jesus. The name's above every name. We rejoice in your holy presence. Thank you, Lord, for saving us, delivering us, and redeeming us, and sending Jesus in our life. We might have life and more abundantly. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We speak peace to our country, decree and declare United States of America, righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. That Jesus Christ is Lord of the United States of America, to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, Lord, that every day more people are receiving Jesus Christ, our nation is Lord, and going forth and ruling and reigning in Christ. And Lord, we thank for our leaders, each and every one of them. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks mean for all men, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God and honesty. So, Lord, we thank for our president, vice president, senators, and congressmen, the legislators, Supreme Court judges, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, armed forces, FBI, CIA, DHS. We claim their salvation, deliverance, and protection, that they hearken diligent voice of the word of God. We pray for all the nations the world, that every nation has the gospel preached as a witness, and then the end should come. Thank you, Lord, that every nation opens up their borders to the missionaries, Lord, the gospel preachers in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray for every one of those ministries out there, Lord, preaching Jesus Christ as Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. Thank you, Lord, the churches are flourishing. And we give you the praise and glory, Lord. And God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today that we will say and do what you have me saying to. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utter soul of ghosts. Now pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word. And hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of your word and led by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's turn our Bibles over to the book of Isaiah. We'll read some scripture here and see where the Lord takes us. And here in Isaiah chapter 53. Now, this is what Jesus is going to do when he comes. This chapter is a redemptive chapter. And verse 4 says here, Surely he borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So throughout the Old Testament, those also, the griefs and sorrows are translated sickness and pains. Yet we did esteem and strict smitten of God and afflicted. But he, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions, he bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, go here to Matthew, please. Read here in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew's going to refer to this, of course, by the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 8, now verse 16 says here, When he was come, they brought unto him, Jesus, many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be filled, which is bone by Isaiah the prophet, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Notice these last words here. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Then we want to go here to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. Now the scripture says here in verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unrighteous, by whose stripes you were healed. Now that's what we want to focus on, that Jesus did this for us already, that himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses, and by his stripes were healed. And just by us, remind ourselves of that, quoting it to ourselves. And every day, just begin to praise God and thank God that you're healed according to the word of God. You know, tests and trials come to everybody. We don't want to magnify that. But we want to magnify God's word. How can we do that? By thanking God that we are what his word says we are. I mean, think about this. How did we get born again? Well, we confess Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, to some of us, that was a real shock. It was to me. I mean, I just assumed I was a Christian because I went to Christian church. It wasn't that I didn't believe in Jesus or I didn't believe in God or didn't believe in the Bible because I did. But I didn't know that I need to confess Jesus Christ my Lord. And remember in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in the heart God is raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes the righteous, but with the mouth confession made salvation. And then Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11 says, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things on earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the glory of God the Father. And then Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, he said, If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my heavenly Father. So it's important that, you know, we tell people that we're born again, <laughs> that Jesus is our Lord. Now you say, you know, tell people you're born again, really know what that means. They, most of them don't know what that means. I mean, I wouldn't have. But, you know, and being explained to them that by receiving Jesus, then you've been forgiven of all your sins. You're receiving the forgiveness of all your sins. And, you know, sometimes people think, well, you know, I've never really sinned. Well, you know, we all have, you know. But nevertheless, we need to know that our, our pardon, our forgiveness is Jesus Christ. Now, every Christian usually knows, I'm talking about born-again people now, know that Jesus took our sins. But when it comes to healing, they weren't taught that. We've always been taught that Jesus took our sins. And we never heard in church that he didn't take our sins. But we've always heard God doesn't know he's healed. 
And see, that was just in us, like, you know, set up like concrete. So what we've been doing is taking God's word and begin to chisel that out of there and begin to decree and declare that we're healed. Now, you don't want to think about other people, about what they didn't get or what didn't what happened to them. In other words, that, you know, they didn't get healed or they died sick. That's going to help out at all. You want to just totally focus on, for you believe in God, for what the word of God says about you. And not only that, you'll be much more beneficial to other people in helping them receive their healing from God. But again, see, we, we've always been taught in church and even outside the church that it's just normal to be sick. And so that's where our, our mindset is. It wasn't God's will that anybody be sick. It came because Adam and Eve sinned. And the Bible talks about Deuteronomy 28 and the, you know, about verse 15 through 60, with long continuous and sore sickness and long continuous. That was a curse. But Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed this curse of law. So what we want to do as believers, we want to just keep ourselves built, get built up, and keep ourselves built up on those promises. Like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Like Matthew 8, 17 and 1 Peter 2, 24. And just boldly decree and declare what they say about us. And continually praise God and thank God that we are what his word says we are. That we have what his word says I have. That's what faith is. See, God wants us to live by faith. And faith speaks of things that don't exist as though they do exist. I mean, everybody can talk in the natural about what they see. And you hear people say, well, well, if I ever see a miracle, I believe in a miracle. Well, it comes actually revert. You know, we, we have to believe first and then we'll see. But to see the world has seen is believing. Well, that's not true. I mean, people saw Jesus, still didn't believe. And we have to realize that believing comes by hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And every day we need to feed on God's word, hear people teach God's word, but also read our Bible, read those promises in God's word. Go over, back over, and over them again. And every day, spend time reading God's promises. Thank God for a Bible reading plan. That's, that's great too. Maybe your church has one. You know, I text people in the morning about reading a chapter. Did today. But the point is that we want those promises. Promises are going to tell us what God's will is for our life. And what we want to do, we want to persuade ourselves with those promises. This is what God wants me to have. Or this is what God says I am. Am in Christ Jesus. And I can do in Christ Jesus. Now, many people have an opinion. Probably everybody does about what God can do and what he can't do. You hear people say, well, I believe God can do anything. But you see now, that's really not going to help you out. If you don't believe it for you, that's like thinking, well, you know, you tell someone, you know, well, you know, God loves you. I know he loves the world. Well, now see, that's not penetrating them yet. No, you're trying to minister to them, the love of God. And they're, 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 you know, pointing everybody else. No, as we meditate on the word and feed God's word, you know, what do you mean meditate? Well, just keep reciting it to yourself. Keep thinking, let the verse just keep rolling around inside your mind. I mean, a lot of other things have been going on there. Let the word do that. Now, it takes some effort on our part, but we can train ourselves. We should. We can train ourselves to think this way. So when something comes up, you want to think, what does the Word say about this? And boldly decree and declare what God's Word says about you. What does God say about healing? Well, He said Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness, by His stripes were healed. That's what He says. Well, people think, well, I've had people say, if that was true, then why are people sick? Well, you know, Jesus took your sins, didn't He? How many, how many probably believe that Jesus took your sins? Of course, everybody who claims to be a Christian believes that. Well, have you sinned since you've been saved? You see, then people will really fight off healing. But that can't be because if healing was for everybody, everybody would be getting healed. Well, salvation is for everybody. Look, think about all the people who went to hell last night by not receiving Jesus Christ the Lord. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be go that way. Narrow is the way that leads to life, and few be, be there that find it. Jesus said in Revelation, I stand at your heart and knock. If any man open up, I'll come and step with him. Well, how does a person open up to Jesus? It goes back to confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. And many other people chose not to do that when they heard the salvation plan. Or when what, someone witnessed to them. Or they heard a message preached. And they just, for whatever reason it was, they didn't act upon it. They chose not to. Well, what are we going to do for that? Well, if they're still on earth, we keep praying for them. Their eyes be opened up. That the hearts be tender to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and claim God's blessings over them and begin to, Lord, I ask you to send labors across their path or whoever it is, you know. Jesus said, The harvest is plenty, the labors are few. Pray therefore, Lord, harvest. He was saying, For labors harvest. So, Lord, I ask you to send labors across so and so's path. Some people to witness to them, wherever they go, that someone's witness to them about Jesus. I mean, people pray, you know, something like that for me, and I'd be working in some place, and someone come up and start telling me about Jesus. Well, that was one of the reasons that happened is that. 
people were praying. People that were born again were praying that I get saved. And that's what we do as believers. We not only witness to people about Jesus, but we also pray for people. That God will send labor. Sometimes, you know, they don't want to listen to us. But, but just getting the word out there and just talking about Jesus, that word doesn't return void. And God's got something to work with. The Holy Spirit confirms the word with signs following. And that's why it's so important that we be vocal about Jesus Christ. Not talking from the top of our head or creeping people out. But really, you'll, you'll know in your heart, in your spirit, that I'm supposed to say something to this person. Like that lady testified last night on the conference call. Uh, she saw this, you know, these people in a park or whatever and, and from another religion, and she went up and talked to him about the Lord, about Jesus, and ended up praying for him. Well, you see now, that's how it is. You just be somewhere, and the Lord puts it on your heart to talk to them about me. I remember one of my brothers, uh, he worked in this dealership uh, approving credit, credit department, and... Uh, and he wasn't real vocal. He was very, worked very hard for his church and, and, and even on his job. He's, the guy really works. So uh, anyway, so he, he, his owner, the boss, real good luck and handsome guy, and his wife, you know, looked like had everything all together. You know, just in her 40s or so, and real, you know, just beautiful family. Well, come to find out, the husband got some real disease. He's going to die soon. If he didn't get a miracle, he's going to die soon. And so that got everybody's attention, going around the shop about the owner having this disease. Well, because my brother's heart, he's supposed to go talk to the owner about Jesus. Now, this owner is not the kind of guy you probably, I guess you'd go talk to about anything. But anyway, so, and my brother's kind of not really known for doing this, so he goes to the office and said, you know, whatever his name is, I'd like to talk to you. Sure it was, and he said, well, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. And he started telling me, the man said, just a moment. Now, he's not too sure what the owner of the, dealership's going to do and he picked up his phone the office phone there and called extension number there and said to his wife come into my office will you so his wife comes in sets down she knows what's going on and he says goes on to my brother okay now proceed what was you going to tell him tell me so my brother talks to him about Jesus Christ about being born again about receiving Jesus Christ the Lord that that he has and and he was just I've been praying you know or whatever he's been saying and praying for you that you receive Jesus and both of them the, the husband and the wife Right there in that office, got born again. Now, you know, my brother wasn't planning on doing that. He wasn't kind of, he wasn't that kind of person to stand up for Jesus, you know, especially at work. This guy could fire you. But nevertheless, thank God, him and his wife got born again. That you see now, that something like that will work out. You'll just be somewhere, and you feel like you know in your heart that you need to say something about Jesus. And you know, you may not be prepared. And, you know, it's kind of, sometimes it'd be real awkward, even sort of scary. But you know you need to say something. And praise God for that. And thank God for that. One time, Rosa Greer, the, one of the famous football players, he got born again and you know, really did a lot of stuff for Jesus. And so uh, he's at a, a hotel restaurant, sitting there with Brother Hagen, Norval Hayes. Or I, think, I don't know if Norval's there or not. But there's a, I get the pictures like eight or nine or ten people there. And so they're all sitting around this you know, big table here, big spread here, eating. All of them are born again, been in a convention had been going on, Christian convention, like seminars and stuff, camp meetings. So they're sitting there eating, and, and these two, you know, like college guys come in, and they see Rosie Greer. Now, they play football in college. And they walk up and say, oh, Rosie Greer, yeah, you know, and knew the statistics and stats and, and said, you know, you're, you know, can you give us some, any pointers or anything, you know? And he says, yeah, uh, you need to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. So he went ahead and talked to those two guys that played college football about receiving Jesus. Most important thing to do is receive Jesus. And so he talked to them about the Lord, and finally they, they left and went their way. And a little bit later, Rosie got up and had to go to the restroom or something, and, and some somebody at the table, and he left says, was it okay for he to do that, Brother Hagan? You know, to witness people in a restaurant, I guess what they meant. And so he said, certainly. He did what we all should do. Well, see now, they tried to talk to him about football, but he wanted to talk to him about something else, something more important. It's about receiving Jesus. That's how God uses us. That's how people talk to me, you know. Witness to me about receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. And so we do that as believers. And you want to show them in the Bible, like Scripture, like Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth right, the mouth confession made salvation. Now again, you know, every seems like everybody's got an opinion about God and religion and everything else. But the Holy Spirit will convict him when you talk about Jesus. You know, look over here at the Gospel of John, please.
in John chapter 16, beginning of verse 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, is it expedient for you, or better off for you, that I go away? For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he's come, this is the Holy Spirit now. When he's come, he will prove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because they go to my Father and see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince's world is, uh, world is judged. I've, I have yet many things seen you, but you cannot bear them. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he not speak himself, but whatsoever he sure here, that shall he speak and show you things to come. Well, what would the Holy Spirit do? He'll, he'll convict the person about receiving Jesus. That's what he did to us. You know, when people told us about Jesus, we, we realized that we need to receive Jesus. Like that pastor said, I'm going to ask one more time. He was giving it all to God, the church I was just visiting, to come and receive Jesus. Well, thank God he did it one more time, you know. How I got on my seat to walk down that aisle. I mean, I wasn't translocated, but it's... I, Still don't know how I got down there. But anyway, praise God to receive Jesus Christ the Lord. It could be at a gas station. It could be anywhere. It's not where you're at. <laughs> Just get saved. You know, It's the thing that you get saved. Now, that's what God uses as us to give our testimony. Talk to people about Jesus. And, uh, you know, you'll know when you need to say something. And it would, you know, whether they respond or not, a positive way or a negative way, or just, you know, look like you didn't penetrate. When you walk away, you're just knowing the word doesn't return void. You gave them a word. You gave them Jesus. He's the word. And you just believe in God for that person. Their eyes understand being light. Their heart be open to Jesus. And thank you, Father God. I share Jesus with them. And I just want to thank you, Father God. Your word doesn't return void. And Satan, I bind you from their life. You know, the, I, and I take authority of your name in Jesus. Look over here at 2 Corinthians, please. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now the scripture says here in verse 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them the lost, in whom the God of this world, this is Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. So what's keeping a person from receiving? They're blinded. Satan's done this. So you take authority of that blinding, tell that demon to go in Jesus' name. You can't have this person. I claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Say, now break your power over their life in Jesus' name and over their mind in Jesus' name. You can't have them in Jesus' name. I claim them for the kingdom of God. Now, if you share Jesus with them or some scripture about Jesus, you're just going to stand on God's word. Hold fast to your confession of faith. I shared the word with them, and I thank you, Father God. Your word doesn't return void. I bound the devil, and he can't have it in Jesus' name. And, Father God, I'm going to thank you. You send labors across their path. See, if one person plants, somebody else waters. But God gives the increase. And somewhere, I mean, the guys that went to me, witnessed me at a hotel, they have no idea I got born. I mean, unless someone told them or God told them, I never saw them again. That I got born again. It was after I left that place that somebody asked me to go to their church, and I ended up going to their church just because I didn't, I, I couldn't get out of go, not going. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, go, go and get this over with. But yeah, praise God, they preach the salvation message about receiving Jesus Christ as Lord, and let you know that if you don't receive Jesus, you go to hell. Well, I never heard that before. I didn't know if you didn't receive Jesus, you go to hell. I mean, I wasn't thinking I was a good person going to heaven, but you know. I guess I didn't think too much about hell. But you see, we're witnessing to people all the time. And you can witness to people that's born again about healing. Even people that's not born again. The Bible says, lay hands on sick and they shall recover. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you lay hands on sick and they shall recover. So they don't have to be born again to receive healing. Just lay hands on them. Decree them and declare they're healed in Jesus' name. And God's healing power. I mean, everybody in the gospels that got healed, none of them are born again. And they got healed. They received their healing. And so what we're going to do as believers, we want to make sure we remind ourselves that I'm on this earth to be a witness, to let my light shine, to let people know about Jesus, to let people know about what Jesus did for us through his death, burial, and resurrection, that Jesus is alive today. And he's moved with compassion. He, he wants that person's need met. He doesn't want anybody suffering because he suffered for us. He suffered shame and pain and sickness, disease and sin and the curse of mankind. And Jesus doesn't want any of us to suffer. And Jesus is God manifest the flesh. Jesus, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The works, the works that I do, it's the Father in me. He doeth the works. The words I speak is my Father's words. It's what I hear my Father say. In other words, if what I hear God say is what I say. Well, think about Jesus never turned anybody down. And God doesn't. And we need to realize that whosoever calls them Lord should be saved. And then when they do, that no man can pluck them out of God's hand. And we want to thank God for that. And don't be discouraged, you know, when, when you pray for people and witness to people and you, sh you seem like you don't see a response, just keep doing it. 
Keep, keep, keep planting the seed. Keep watering the seed. George Mueller had five, I think it was five, uh, friends of his when he got born again. He'd had before he got born again. And then uh, he prayed for them for almost, I think it was 50 years. It's in his autobiography. He prayed for, for them for them 50 years to be saved. And sometimes he'd run across one of them. And say, is there, he'd say to them, has, the, has God answered my prayer yet? They said, well, what do you mean? He said, are you saved? No. But he, he go, he will. <laughs> so he kept praying for them. And three of them got saved before he passed away. I think he lived to be close to nine or up the way up there. He's the one that had the orphan's home over in England. And uh, he said, you know, so he kept praying for him. And then I think one got saved, the fourth one, at his funeral. And the fifth one, after, that was all over, up there, all the funeral, a time went by. So he got all five of them in the kingdom of God. Now, my grandma that was born again, she would let you know that she was praying for you. And the reason she's still on this earth is that her job is to pray her children in the kingdom of God. And she probably spent 40 years praying for her children, their spouses, and their children, which would be her grandchildren, which I was one. But she would say the reason that she's still here it was because she, she wanted to pray in her children in the kingdom of God. Because they got, she got saved after the kid was born. Uh, she may grown and married. And so she felt real obligated, and of course she would, that, they, that you, know, you weren't a Christian before, now you're born again, got your act together, and now you're praying your kids in. And so our life is, is dedicated to God as praying because we have all these people got to pray for every day. I mean, it's just we're constantly consumed and taken up by praying for people. All of us as believers. I mean, we just, we have, there's just people we have to pray for every day. We know in our heart that we have to pray for them and, and believe God that they receive Jesus or if they're born again, receive the Holy Spirit or receive, you know, eyes are standing and be enlightened. So they'll begin to see what belongs to them in Christ. And of course, we pray for ourselves that we see things in God's Word. It's good for us to read those scriptures in Ephesians, those two prayers in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, and put people's names in there. Put your name in there yourself, that I just stand and be enlightened. For Paul said, I cease not to give thanks for you, make mention of your prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give each, each one of his spirit of wisdom, revelation, and eyes him. The eyes just stand and be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his glory, what is the rich glory in the inheritance of saints, what is exceedingly greatness his power to us who believe, according to the work of my power, which he wrought in Christ, were raised dead, and set in his own right hand, places far above all principal power, power, might, and dominion, and every name's name, not only in this world, but also in that's come, and put all things in his feet, and gave him behead all things in church, which is the body of, of him that filleth all in all. For this cause I bow my knees, and follow Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven there is name. That you grant us, according to rich glory, to be strengthened might by spirit of men. That Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we be rooted in our love, may be comprehended all the saints, was the breadth and the length and depth height. To know the love of Christ past knowledge is my full, full God. Now in him is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask to think, according to the power of the work within us. And in me glory and church for Christ you through all age, world died in man. Now in those prayers, you can put people's names in there, where it says ye, you know, put the, the names of people, also include yourself. And what happens to that? <clears throat> well, you're praying that the eyes be opened up, that they be, they'll grow spiritually, the believer will. And it's good to pray the 91st Psalm over them, too. If you pray Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, then pray the 91st Psalm with the person. Put the person's name there. Father God, I, I bring them to you, your children, your loved ones, whoever you're praying for. Them. I pray for the nation for that, that the, and the nation's protected. Protect the Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place most high, shall abide and shall the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He's my refuge, my fortune, my God, and my trust. And I just put people's names there, the people I'm praying for, that they, they trust in the Lord with all their heart. And then I'll go back to verse 1 and, and start again. He that dwells in the secret place most high, shall abide and shall the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He's my refuge, my fortune, my God, and trust. Surely he shall deliver us there. For Sonera Fowler, noise of pestilence. He should cover his feathers and his wings to trust. His truth be shielded by fire. Thou shalt not be afraid to tear by night, nor fly by day, nor pest walk in darkness, nor destruction of waste in noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only thy eyes shall behold and see the world wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, the most high of the habitation, there shall no evil fall, and he shall plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over to keep their own low ways. There shall brother up in hands, lest thou dash with stone. Thou shalt up on a lion, an otter, a young lion, dragging to the temple feet. Because he says, Love upon me, therefore I would live. I would set him high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him, so I would live in honor. With long life will I satisfy him, show him my salvation. So we've taken the scriptures there in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, and the 91st Psalm, and prayed for those individuals. Put their names in there, and decree and declare that over them, the 91st Psalm, that they're protected. 
And also, it's just good to pray that for our nation, that the United States of America is protected. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. But whatever we do, will prosper in Jesus' name. And decree and declare our nation's peace, peaceful in Jesus' name. We have a mighty revival in our nation. See, it's what we say. <clears throat> There's no sense waiting on God. It's what we say. He needs us to decree and declare it. We decree and declare it. He's got something to work with. And that's what we have to remind ourselves. We're responsible the way this place goes. It should be really easy to say, well, it's the end times. You know, I've heard that since I got the night I got born again. No matter what was going on, it was the end times. I think some people just can't wait that everybody has to suffer and drink tang and live in the cave, you know. But nevertheless, people would talk that way. And there always anything. It just gave them an excuse to blame everything as bad going on that this, is, this goes to show that Jesus come back. Now, Jesus come back any moment. I got that. And thank God I'm... I'm endeavoring to get people in the kingdom of God. But the point is, to use an excuse not to do anything is wrong. You know, if Jesus come back at any moment, praise God for that. But we got to get people in the kingdom of God. And we do that by getting the gospel out there. And, of course, Satan's going to do everything he can to run interference to try to keep that from happening. So when, you, when your country doesn't have peace, it always hinders the gospel first. That's the tent of it. It's to stop it. See, Satan hates Jesus. He hates the Bible, so he's going to do everything he can, try to keep it out of church, out of school, out of the offices, out of government offices, and everything else. And people, you know, just do nothing about it. How do we do? We don't fight with people. We come against the principalities and powers and take authority over Satan in Jesus' name. And one thing, you can't have my country in Jesus' name, Satan. I, I bind you. I break your power in Jesus' name. You've been defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and come against him in Jesus' name. But Christians sit around and watch the news forever, you know, when they could have been taking that time praying and interceding. It's like they're trying to get shocked about what's going on and just shake their head, you know, like they shook their, wagged their heads and went past Jesus being crucified. And so, so often Christians do that, you know, with all the bad stuff that's going on. Well, look for the good and come against the bad in Jesus' name. And you can do it. Praise God, we all need to do it. Father God, we pray today. We thank you, Lord, for our nation. We decree and declare we have a minor revival in the United States of America. We decree it's done that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? The most important event, step, thing you can do is receive Jesus. Your greatest decision you will ever make is receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. I'm going to read these scriptures here from Romans. Then I'm going to ask you a prayer prayer. In Romans chapter 10, the Bible says here in verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believes the righteousness, and the mouth of confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever calleth the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this prayer now to receive Jesus. If you're not sure if you've done it or not, let's just do it. Now, then you can be sure that you've done it. Pray these words after. I mean it from your heart. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I confess in my mouth, and I believe in my heart, Jesus is Lord. I thank you, God, that Jesus took my sins on the cross and judgment to sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised the dead. He's alive today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and using me to bring glory and honor to you. Use my life in Jesus' name, amen. You did that prayer? I want you to get a, a Bible and start reading the New Testament and find a church to go to that preaches Jesus Christ the only way to heaven. That's important. The most important thing is that Jesus is the only way to heaven because Jesus said he was in John chapter 14, verse 6. So you remind yourself of that and be faithful to 10. And your church needs your help. The folks as members of church or your pastor, your church needs your help, your tithes, your offering, your prayers, whatever you all do for your church. Because so often, so many churches aren't open up. And some people are intimidated about going. But nevertheless, we're believing God and everything's okay. We're standing together in Jesus' name. Also, you can watch these programs here. They're live on Facebook at, what, 8 in the morning, 10 in the morning, 6 o'clock at night. And then you get the call in, the conference call. And that's church on the phone. Praise God for that. Amen. We can do that. Father God, I decree and declare that each person is healed, delivered, and blessed of the Lord. Because your word says so. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoyed being with you today. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Money. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.